start uh, with a few symbolic elements or detail in uh, French. Uh, to, perhaps it's a bit detailing, uh, to uh, uh, in, in, evoke the element of utopia in that uh, German revolution of uh, 1890. As it happened, I was teaching in the fall and winter of 1992, 1993, I was uh, teaching for <coughs> the winter and the spring at the University of Dresden in former East Germany. And uh, three years had passed since the revolution, but I, it was still, uh, I could still feel, so to speak, see and feel the old regime, the old GDR in Dresden, the old ruins, blackened by, by the by the flames, still, uh, the people that are, uh, I suppose I was immediately recognized as a best student when I went to dining, uh, they didn't relate easily to me. I was, uh, let's say, the dominating new power for them. Uh, I saw real estate agents uh, with the most elegant Mercedes in the old quarter of. Uh, the city that the lights on the buildings which were had intended to buy uh, <laughs> from Düsseldorf, one of the richest cities. So you had this really the tension between uh, the old uh, society and what will come. Near the office building, uh, the university, it's a technical university of Dresden, now in the, the former old university, they have a campus and uh, near the office building, in itself, by the way, very interesting. Uh, in the office building, there was a travel agency, uh, which I passed every so often, run by students. And for almost two months, they had the focused focus on a trip they offered to Hawaii. They didn't offer to go to Austria, or to Ireland, or to the Scottish Islands, but to Hawaii, because Hawaii of course, eternally the blue sky, the endless the sandy beaches, and uh, the pineapples to eat every day. So that was somehow utopia. Uh, first symbolic element. One of the uh, uh, leading dissidents at the now in the fall in the, uh, and winter of '89 was Bernabel Ole, she was in what, that, what was called a new forum, to which also our present uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel belonged in the new forum. She eventually then joined the Christian Democratic Party. And Ole Ole didn't make it because she lived much more in the realm of utopia. And there are two remarks of her I want to uh, quote after she more or less was left behind and she said we wanted justice and what we got for the rule of law in German the Rechtsstaat the rule of law and in, in the German word Rechtsstaat has very much bureaucratic uh, connotations the rule of law rule of law means of course uh, with the Rechtsstaat when you want to get justice you have to go through the whole bureaucracy of uh, uh, trials and uh, law courts and so on. So justice for her probably was something uh, uh, much more comprehensive and radical. The second observation of her, also I think uh, inspired by a kind of utopian thinking, we wanted not just a piece of the cake, we wanted the whole bakery. <laughs> 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 Um, next uh, symbolic element, the uh, uh, East German uh, population, of course, 
uh, emigrated for years before the revolution, okay, for two hours every night in watching West German TV news. And uh, so they, they left, so to speak, uh, in, on, their, on their chairs. And there again, now remember the trip offered to Hawaii, the, the, the news uh, were interrupted is everywhere by publicity. And in this publicity, you saw, of course, beautiful young couples riding a Mercedes sports car on the Mediterranean coast, right? You saw a young couple buying a beautiful house with all the uh, most elegant and modern items for your kitchen. Uh, uh, the publicity didn't show beggars uh, uh, someplace in the uh, east in West Berlin, or uh, they didn't show poor people. They showed that they gave a kind of consumerist utopia, mm -hmm. and that's why, among others, they went to, to the streets, you know, to, to to get to this utopia of uh, publicity. And uh, the East Germans now, I come back to this. The East Germans had tried. You 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 know about this better. They tried for many years to jam uh, radio and TV, but for, for years the past they had, uh, they had given it up uh, before they were left the technology. Uh, so uh, uh, the Germans, the East Germans, were uh, anyway. The third, the third symbolic element uh, focused on the famous rock star Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> um, who, uh, it was interesting, of course, the, 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 the youngsters of East Germany, the young generation listened and grew up with the Western rock music and takes their, of course, marketing. Uh, uh, already in the, uh, yeah, I, I should focus, of course, we have time. So, Bruce Springsteen went to give a concert in East Berlin on July 1988. And uh, the East German authority that we have somebody uh, sympathizing with us because he was known for his very, very leftist views. He had given concerts in Cuba. So the East German authority, the communist authority, but they had it in the pocket. But of course, they didn't have it in his pocket. And before he gave his uh, concert in the presence of 160,000 young people in, in East, East Berlin, he said, I want to tell you, I quote from Bernstein's uh, speech or introductory remarks, I want to tell you I'm not here for or against any government, but I came to play rock and roll for you East Berliners in the hope that one day all the barriers will be torn down. A year later, or a bit more than a year later, the war was and on down. Um, now, uh, what I call the German Revolution, of course I'm not the only one, can be considered as an authentic revolution. Um, we have a, a classic theory of revolution formulated in Book 5 of Aristotle's Politics. And Aristotle developed or offered a series of criteria in which one can still perfectly work to understand or to define what is a revolution or not. One of the first observations of Aristotle, and that would perfectly apply to the East German regime, that the revolution is actually provoked by the old regime, and not the revolutionary are created in a, in a way by uh, the stubbornness, stupidity of the leaders. And um, uh, I uh, uh, offer a few of those criteria. The stupidity of the regime, which I mean of the regime leaders, Honecker and others, uh, became evident and very apparent on the eve, on the evening of November 9, 89, at the so called opening of, of the poll, because as you know, it was by mistake. Uh, Mr. Schaffer, the press officer of the East German uh, regime, Schaffowski, uh, had no directives. Uh, he was shuffling his papers. There was an Italian journalist asking him now if they're free travel for the East Germans. Well, I, 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 have to, I think, yes, I think it's recorded. <laughs> I think, yes, yes, I believe it is. 
But of course, it was totally wrong. It was totally wrong. But it was immediately uh, sent uh, to the news of the West German TV, received by the East Germans, and they streamed to the ball and, uh, and the few guards, I mean, there were thousands and thousands, and the two guards in their, in their heart already weakened. They said, well, they can so go and so forth. Stupidity, stupidity. Then uh, another criterion, the stubbornness, which uh, very much of the regime uh, uh, not unwill un totally unwilling to understand the situation, uh, the situation of the country. And that was perfectly typified by the, by the chief of the East German regime, Honecker, who up to the very last moment uh, uh, refused to, to recognize and, uh, the scenes of, of October when Dorbachev Dorbachev visited the thing for the great anniversary of the of the GDR. Uh, you see on the on the photographs and on the on the videos, you see Honecker being there frozen, so to speak, in the summerness. And they, um, at the same time, the people starting with the, 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 the middle of September going to the streets by increasing numbers. And another element of a classical revolution, the people was striving, so to speak. The people in the street was, was striving to pushing the government forward. And of course, that's a, if, uh, I mean, a recipe for leaders in order to avoid uh, a revolution. Uh, <laughs> one should recognize that one should not allow the, the, uh, uh, the people uh, to discover that one is weak. And the people in the streets, which they, they began in Leipzig uh, by, by uh, 100,000 and then it grew until in January a million people were uh, demonstrating in this uh, they, they grew the numbers because the people in the city understood that they, they, they were strong. And that's the decisive point, you know. When the people in the street understand that they are, they are weak, well, let's try how weak they are, as you put it. And, uh, and then, in addition, they made the mistake uh, that they changed the, the, the governmental group uh, in, 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 with an increasing speed, which also, of course, the people perfectly understood as, as a sign of weakness, you know. One leader of the colleague resigned, and then uh, there was another one appointed. He resigned a few weeks later, and so on. So uh, actually, the the, uh, the the people was was well was pushing pushing the regime uh, aside. Um, everyone knew about the moral bankruptcy of the of the country, uh, including for the the apparatus, which also explains why it was then. Uh, uh, falling down. And um, uh, what was not so well now known about the economic bankruptcy, bankruptcy but people uh, in, the, in the government apparatus knew it also. Uh, so, uh, as I said, uh, the, the revolutionary push uh, by the people in the streets in, in, in major cities, the major cities were Leipzig, Dresden, and Istanbul. Um, uh, which were the most uh, important uh, cities. And in Istolin, as I said, uh, um, on November 4, on November 4, before the war, 1 million people. And uh, a final remark, uh, then uh, they happened also, let's say, the kind of storm of the, of the Bastille. Uh, in January 15, 1990, the people stormed the center of the Stasi of the secret police in the Norman street in Istanbul, which, which also is a turning point uh, because the Stasi was uh, kind of the, the, the entity the most uh, feared uh, of the of the East uh, uh, Germany, and people discovered, of course, what uh, were there in the France. Um, now, that's to, uh, my part of the, on, on the authentic revolution in, uh, in East Germany in 1990, and now the European aspect to explain, because all this and what eventually came out, it would not have happened, of course, in other European context, European in the last sense. Now, I have to begin with the mystery 
Gorbachev. Det fenomenet Gorbachev, because without Gorbachev, all this could not have happened and we might not sit here. I, I, I would maintain for all of it. And the history of Gorbachev, despite of all my attempts among my colleagues who research on the subject, is not really yet resolved. Because imagine, I, know, I give you another symbolic element. Um, in, uh, on June 21, 1984, uh, the French President Mitterrand uh, had the occasion to speak to a conversation with uh, Gorbachev that was at the, after uh, the death of uh, Antoine, and uh, Mitterrand attended uh, the uh, funeral uh, uh, celebrations, and he was sitting, and Gorbachev was sitting at his uh, at the state dinner. And go back then, the middle of always curious, uh, 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 ask questions to Gorbachev. And Gorbachev, in the Supreme Soviet, was responsible for agriculture. So, at the middle of said, for most of our agriculture, we see. The middle of never said the uh, uh, Soviet Union, always, but we see. For most of our agriculture, we see. How does it go, uh, agriculture? And uh, Gorbachev uh, answered, badly. And then Mr. Hong asked, how badly since when? <laughs> and the answer, the answer of Gorbachev, since 1917. <laughs> 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 Mr. Hong uh, told this, uh, his people and said, well, that's the man. That, that is the man. And uh, focused on Gorbachev. Uh, and everyone was uh, dis uh, discovered a kind of uh, openness of and also his wife, Carissa Gorbachova, who also uh, struck everyone by her elegance, by her openness, by her excellent English, uh, and so on. But the quick question, and I, I just put it in the room, the question is how could someone like Gorbachev emerge in this petrified uh, apparatus? And it's, uh, there are some indications, but again, so that's the first very important aspect of the general uh, framework. And then you had uh, within, uh, within uh, the Eastern, Eastern, I mean in the language of the Cold War, um, the, in the Eastern part of Europe and beyond the Iron Curtain, you had all this kind of uh, elements and developments of the dissolution of the Soviet Empire. Uh, like uh, the protests of uh, the Baltic states uh, in the summer of June 22, 1989, the Lithuanian uh, parliament declared illegal the integration of the Baltic states into the uh, Soviet Union and that became the independence movement of the Baltic states became one of the elements for uh, Gorbachev's problems. Um, then a very important like you know about it, I just recall it. A very important uh, event in July, July 7, 8, 1989, there was a summit meeting of the Warsaw Pact, at which officially the so called Brezhnev doctrine was revocated. So from then on, people knew if there will be attempts towards regime uh, change, there will be no longer. Uh, Easterly, no longer Budapest, no longer Prague. The Soviets will not intervene. Soviets means Gorbachev, not the military. The, uh, the, um, there were 600,000 Soviet troops, fully armed, fully armed to occupy Western Europe, stationed in East Germany. The headquarters were at Kals, 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 Kals in the suburbs of East Berlin, and the chief of the Soviet army troops in East Germany was ready to intervene. Uh, and uh, some members of the East German leadership, and particularly the wife of Bonnega, Margot Bonnega, she opted in deliberation with the regime for the so called Chinese solution, which means Tiananmen Square, which had happened in the summer. And the uh, East German army had preserved, pre uh, prepared everything hospitals, blood reserves, prisons for all of us. 
<laughs> to put away the past. <laughs> Everything was prepared. Everything was prepared. Uh, uh, but, but, uh, elements, and this is still a secret that doesn't know, elements within the Israel leadership didn't want, didn't go along with uh, Margot, and didn't go along with, uh, with uh, uh, Poneka, the, the husband. But that, of course, of course, also the nickname. Gorbachev refused to follow their advice of this general, of this Soviet general in, uh, in East Germany. Then Gorbachev himself, in uh, October 25, 89, at Helsinki, he made a state visit to uh, Finland, said each, each Europe, East Europe, uh, European state, I quote, can follow its own path. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Right. In Russia, yeah, Russia. Again, again, uh, uh, so to speak, uh, an, uh, 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 an encouragement uh, uh, for the for the revolutionary events. Uh, I evoke um, uh, another element: the attitude of the Hungarians uh, to the, 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 the to recall it uh, on. Uh, on May 2, 1989, the Hungarian border guards cut the fences of the Iron uh, Curtain at the border with Austria, uh, which also was a, a very, so to speak, revolutionary event. And, uh, and then, very important, uh, as of August 9, they allowed East German tourists, so to speak, um, uh, no, they refused to send East Germans who uh, uh, had come as tourists to Hungary to send them back to, uh, to Chile. Now, that's a very important, uh, also I would say, political mental element because the, the, the Hungarian government had signed a treaty with the East Germans that. Uh, East German tourists who would come to Hungary and would refuse to go back after two or three weeks, that forcefully uh, the Hungarian authorities would transport them back to East Germany. And it was, it was an international, so to speak, treaty. Point one. Point two. Hungary, like many other European states, had signed the Helsinki uh, agreements. And under the Helsinki agreement, also Hungary, had agreed a uh, free movement of people. So that there are two contradictory uh, contractual obligations. And the, uh, the uh, Hungarian foreign minister at the time, Paul, uh, according to mythology, legend, uh, was walking up uh, during the night in his office, uh, deliberating with himself which treaty should I respect and which treaty should I break? <laughs> so eventually he decided I, I, I break the treaty with the, with the East German regime and I adhere to the agreement of Helsinki and uh, refused uh, consequently to forcefully send back uh, the East Germans in Hungary, which then uh, uh, led to to uh, an accumulation of so-called refugees, thousand, ten thousand, that in the night of September 10, 11, the, East, uh, the Hungarian authorities decided to open the uh, border towards Austria just uh, widely, and uh, there are pictures one can see in our uh, uh, the East Germans uh, in, uh, in somehow in uh, Chevy Lotus because they had. Been for two months or so in the camping grounds and so on, and uh, without shaking and whatever, up to, uh, to freedom to Austria, and of course, from there they would go to, um, to West Germany. Um, uh, I, at, at the moment, it occurs, I didn't notice to the moment, uh, it occurs to me another very uh, important element of which also many people. Uh, had not thought that the East German regime was uh, proposing it and trying it to, uh, to uh, change it. The, um, the uh, West German governments always 
and uh, maintain that the uh, nationality offered to Germans also applies to East Germans. So if the East German regime said that's imperialist, you know, you don't recognize our sovereignty. Uh, so that meant that every East German, in the moment he or she said who's put into a West German ambassador or on West German soil would claim a West German passport. Then all the entitlements, uh, health benefits and so on, you know. Uh, that was also, of course, uh, a very important element. Okay, um, now on a, on a uh, higher level, and uh, that will be my last part. Um, what can we, what, what, what should we should we say, or could we say in very big terms on the relationship be, between the German Revolution and Europe? Now, uh, that's what I'm now going to uh, explain, opens a whole field for uh, long seminars. Uh, it's a geopolitical, a geopolitical remark. Uh, as it happens, it, uh, uh, it, it, it didn't, uh, uh, as it happens, Germany uh, finds herself at the center of Europe. Or you could put it the other way around. Uh, the center of, of, of Europe, uh, that is Germany. Uh, uh, the Germans didn't choose it. Uh, as, as the Portuguese didn't choose to be, to be in Portugal. Uh, but uh, being at the center of Europe throughout European history has meant that almost all European nations took a great interest in what happened to the center of Europe, right? Uh, uh, in particular, uh, uh, France, but also other, England, uh, the balance of power and so on, but also the uh, Eastern uh, nations, uh, the Northern nations, I recall that Sweden intervened in the Thirty Years' War. So, uh, um, uh, let's say, just to take it, uh, again the example of the um, revolution in Portugal in 1974. Uh, everyone was happy, but uh, people wouldn't say that concerns us existentially. Whereas uh, what happened in 1990, all other European, or most other European nations would say, well, that's also our concern. As it has been the concern, uh, uh, what happened in the center uh, 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 throughout centuries. And in real terms, uh, the German Revolution threatened the whole of the character. Uh, and the picture was convenient for many people, really, because uh, it was a order. Uh, um, and the, the, the problem of the center of Europe, the, or what, the, what was called the German problem, was in a way caged in. It was frozen. It was perfectly frozen. The iron burning going through Germany, that was just the best, and uh, fine, you know. And, the, and uh, the, the East Germans are part of Warsaw Pact, uh, the West Germans of NATO, uh, but of you, you will record it. Uh, uh, there, there was a quip about the meaning of NATO, uh, and uh, 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 in this way, that the purpose of NATO is to keep the Americans in, to keep the Russians out, and to keep, to keep the Germans down. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the purpose of NATO. So suddenly, the Germans, uh, I mean, the Germans, they know what they are, they went up. Uh, and threatened, uh, uh, and of course, it, as, as other European nations did, as I, as I mentioned, yeah, the Balts, and, uh, and there was Poland before, and so on, and Hungary, and Czechoslovakia. Yeah. So uh, the, the order of Yalta was uh, challenged. So what happened? And what happens to NATO? What happens to the, to the Marshall Plan? Uh, um, uh, that, that was a, great, a, a very great question. Uh, three, about three weeks ago, and now I'm, I'm in the midst of actuality. Three weeks ago, in the French newspaper, the Figaro, there was a two page interview with our great friend, 
Putin. And uh, Putin complained. Uh, and one big complaint there was the extension of NATO eastwards. And he said, You, you, with the Crimea, with the Ukraine, who started it? Not me. You started it. He said it this way. You started it with the extension of NATO eastward. And this is uh, a hot subject, also in scholarship, uh, because um, it's not clear. Uh, the Russians, beginning, uh, starting with Gorbachev, maintain until today that they received a promise from the West, namely from the Americans that NATO would not extend beyond the east at uh, the German-Polish border. And there are, uh, 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 according to the document, the archives, there is one, uh, they, they, when they go into the details, they refer to one uh, conversation on February 26, 1990, between Sheva Nazi, the Soviet Foreign Minister, and Jim Baker, the American Foreign Minister, uh, when during that conversation, Jim Baker, uh, in diplomatic language, uh, said, Yeah, yeah, uh, we will not go beyond. Uh, we will, uh, NATO will uh, be just include East Germany because that, that was in the context whether Germany unified would be to maintain membership in NATO, and so it was, there were all kinds of uh, different ideas and the Americans said, no, no, we will take in uh, East Germany, but then, then it's over. When you read, when you read, uh, I, I, I can read the archive, uh, the document, uh, it's, uh, as I say, diplomatic language. And it's not certainly not a formal promise. There might be other archival documents, but it's, there, is, there never was a treaty, nothing, no. uh, Putin, again, uh, it, it, it was, it was uh, I, I have it just, uh, 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 individual convention. For me, uh, it was a uh, uh, promise. He says, we can prove it, but uh, uh, so far no, no document uh, is also from the Russian. Uh, but, uh, um, so to go back, uh, uh, so that's an uh, actual situation. Uh, 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 the, 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 you, you, this, you, the, the, you start when you look at these events of uh, some, let's say, from the war, war of 89 to summer 1990, you start with uh, people demonstrating in the streets of Leipzig, Dresden, and East Berlin, and at the end, you have the big question uh, the order of the item uh, finished and what happened afterwards. Something happened, but that, that's beyond my talk. I can answer to it in uh, the discussion, and I don't want to <coughs> take too much time. And uh, I thank you for your attention.